Hey guys, um, I, I didn't want to make this video for the longest time, but about a month ago, I saw something horrific and I just need to tell somebody because I'm going crazy. <laughs> I saw a YouTuber um, manipulate their audience using emotion. Ooh, the tea is spilling. You guys gotta comment below if you're obsessed with matcha like I am. I have one every single day. No joke. So basically, recently I saw a video by Shane Dawson with Eugenia Cooney. These are both YouTubers and Shane was kind of interviewing Eugenia, who recently is recovering from an eating disorder. I mean, the story itself is very, very, very touching, but there was a lot of things that Shane does and is infamous for to make the audience feel something. I've seen a lot of people in the comment section say that it's manipulative. The point is that you shouldn't be putting words in their mouth, but Shane goes in a very different direction. Have you ever realized that some of these YouTubers are doing this for their own benefit? Maybe you don't even know, but your favorite people are subconsciously trying to force you to buy something without even you knowing it. Maybe you really, really want people People to buy your merchandise or fall in love with you and have an amazing fan base. Here is how YouTubers manipulate their audience using emotion. Today we got a sponsor. So thank you so much to Honey for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jade, and I am someone who is fascinated by psychology and marketing. I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur, and I've recently done a series kind of about logical fallacy. So last week, I uploaded a logical fallacy about bandwagon effect, and you guys loved it. So here is uh, part two, and it's going to be talking about emotions. By definition, what does appeal to emotion mean? The definition says you attempt to manipulate an emotional response in place of a valid or compelling argument. I know this is going to get really, really controversial, but a good example of appeal to emotion in action day to day is when Shane Dawson makes a documentary about a very heavy topic. And at the very end, he says, this is sponsored by SeatGeek or this is sponsored by Honey because the audience feels something and they probably don't need to buy anything. But because Shane made them feel something, they're more likely to act. Okay, so now you know what appeal to emotion is, but how does it work, Jade? How can I use it for my channel? We're gonna do that, just grab a snack. This video is gonna be very detailed and you don't wanna miss anything. And if you're so far enjoying this video, make sure you give this video a like. It lets me know that you're interested, excited, and wanting to learn more. So why is this so important? How does this even work? A lot of you guys are saying, Jade, I would never buy anything with emotion. No one can manipulate me. Okay, well listen, Frank, this is how it works. We're gonna go into some neural science so you guys understand why this works. If you don't understand why appeal to emotion works, you can't use it properly. You need to understand the foundation. So let's begin. Our brain is wired to look for threats or rewards. If one is detected, the feeling region of the brain alerts us through a release of chemical messages. Essentially, from your brain, it releases hormones throughout your entire body. This prepares us for a fight or flight response. Just imagine, you know when people say, think fast. Well, yeah, your brain is impulsively making decisions so it can protect itself. So what happens is sometimes in these instances, the feeling region of the brain kicks in before the thinking part to protect us. But these days when we watch YouTube, it's rare that we're gonna get attacked by a bear or get punched. So what's in reality happening is we can act impulsively. A really good example of this is have you ever had a friend that just gives you bad vibes because they remind you of another friend that did you no good five years ago? And it's not logical to connect the dots, but immediately you label them as not a good person and you don't want to talk to them because they just give you bad vibes. So basically what your limbic brain is doing is trying to conserve energy by connecting the dots of saying, you know what, Sally did you wrong five years ago, so Rob looks like Sally, so you're not going to talk to Rob again. And your brain isn't always the most logical. Again, it's acting on emotion because what your limbic brain is trying to do is create a fast decision to protect yourself. You don't wanna get eaten by a bear and it's the same thing. It's like your brain doesn't want to get hurt. So it's just gonna make really, really quick connections. So it makes impulsive decisions faster. I came up with three steps YouTubers do to manipulate their audience, AKA stimulate the limbic brain. The first step is to choose an emotion. Ask yourself, how do I want people to feel? And personally, like I hope you guys feel motivated and excited. That's the emotion I always want to give on my channel. But other people like Shane Dawson might do grief or sadness or guilt. Here's a list of emotions you guys can pull from. Now I'll have a whole YouTube video about what emotions you guys can choose, link below. Okay, now we lead to step two. 
What stories will make people feel that emotion? All you wanna do in step two is find moments in your life or scenarios where you felt that emotion and that will create relatability. When you're able to say like, this happened to me, that this happened to you, people make that connection. It's just like the friend analogy. If you show your friend that you have a really, really sad story, they're gonna connect it to whatever happened to them five years ago. For example, if I'm trying to do motivated and energized, I'll probably think about moments where, where do most people feel energized? For me, it's a cup of matcha green tea latte. And then step three, you wanna tell that story in a beginning, middle, and end. Fun fact, I used to be myself an actress. I was in musicals and plays in high school, and every time we act, the script has act one, act two, act three, which basically breaks down the script and characters do certain things at certain times. Basically, when you're trying to tell that story, make sure you show the beginning, the middle, and like Shane Dawson, he took a story about Eugenia Cooney, which a lot of people could just pass by and just like say the recovery was easy, but he really went inside and talked about the beginning, the middle, the after of her recovery process. You guys have to watch that video. It's very, 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 very good. But it's so important to intensify that story by using eye contact, music. When you're telling that story, you wanna act like you're telling it for the first time to your best friend and it just happened to you. So a lot of YouTubers are not good at making them feel like it's real time in the moment. If you guys saw the intro of this video, you saw my heavy breathing. My eye contact was everywhere. So you wanna tell that story like it just happened. I always like to say like, imagine you're running in the forest and you just found the police and the police ask you what happened and you're like on the spot trying to tell it out. So with that being said, how are you telling your story? Are you really trying to tell your audience that real time emotion? In conclusion, YouTubers that manipulate their audience are just making their audience feel whatever is happening is happening to them right now. And the way you can do that is by thinking about one, what emotion do you wanna tell? Two, what stories can I tell to recreate that emotion? And three, am I using eye contact, music? And am I talking like it's happening to me right now? When I was in high school, I'd come home and go to my room to create freely. It was the only place I felt safe to self-express myself when the world was judging me. And on YouTube, they were judging me too. I quickly realized that no matter where I ran, someone has something to say about me. And I think it's because you judge people the way you judge yourself. My parents saw my art as passion, but my friends in school thought I was overwhelmingly crazy. Some people see storytelling as manipulative, and others see it as art. So at the end of the day, who cares if someone calls you crazy or manipulative? It's just their character extended on you. Listen to yourself and create freely. Do what gives you energy. Hey guys, I'm about to upload this video and everyone at my office is staring at me. Before you go, I have a special little giveaway. You've probably seen me obsess over matcha and I have a special surprise. My friends at matchaclub.us is giving away a month's supply of matcha. Basically, Matcha Club is a subscription box that sends samples of matcha powders because we all know there's a lot of different types and products and flavors and grades like i don't even know what the fuck how many grades there are i think it's a super smart way to try it if you haven't already we're doing a giveaway for one lucky person it'll be announced next week in august and the rules are super simple just comment below on this youtube video literally anything and follow me on instagram and subscribe to this youtube channel i really want to thank you guys for watching you guys for the world to me you know that for this video specifically i had trouble making it so a lot of the advice I really need to take in. So thank you so much for being here with me. I love you, I love you. And shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below your thoughts. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys very soon.